Hi, I'm Sam Williams, and I'm an architectural researcher. Today, we're going to take a look at the architectural details of the Kingdom of Wakanda from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The first time Wakanda's location is hinted at is in an Easter egg in Iron Man 2, showing on a map in Eastern Africa. We get a glimpse of the kingdom at the end of Captain America Civil War, but we got our first real look at Wakanda in the movie Black Panther. So Bernanzana is the capital of the Kingdom of Wakanda, also known as the Golden City. So right away I noticed that this is a vast, sprawling city with skyline that's a mix of contemporary and more traditional architectural styles. It's surrounded on all sides by a mountain range. There's a river flowing through it and a central tower that peeks out. The city does not seem to be based on a grid and instead it seems to follow the contours of the natural features that form the city. So the city's setting within nature sort of reminds me of Nairobi in Kenya. So in recent years, Nairobi has experienced explosive growth and the government has found it important to impose development restrictions so that development does not encroach upon the nature preserves. And here you see there's a very similar logic being employed where the city is very tightly contained, even allowing elements of nature to blend in without fully sprawling into the surrounding environment. So the skyline that we see here also reminds me a lot of Johannesburg, where there is sort of the central tower and the rest of the city is sort of unfocused and sprawling. A lot of the recent growth in Johannesburg is largely uncontrolled, which is why you're seeing a lot of the high rises placed next to low rises, and they're just trying to fit them wherever they can. And the fact that this is completely surrounded by mountains is a direct reference to the Kingdom of Lesotho, which is surrounded by the Maloti Mountains, which is what the director, Ryan Coogler, said inspired this setting. So I can see a lot of recognizable Western styles, and also the production designer mentioned that Zaha Hadid inspired quite a bit of the building design. Something that's completely evident in this photo is how advanced and futuristic the city looks. Marvel really loves the solar punk aesthetic. The idea behind solar punk is what happens if we solve all the world's problems. There is no hunger, there is no war, and there's no threat from global catastrophe or climate change or anything like that. But not by magic, by technology. Obviously, but I, I've never seen it this efficient. Here is very much a really clear example of how nature and a city can blend together after we solve a lot of the other ecological issues that we may experience during industrialization. Something else I find pretty notable about this image is that despite the sprawling nature of the city, it seems like there is no massive highway, there's no car-oriented infrastructure. It all seems to be just tied directly into nature and it just sort of indicates that this is a very walkable place and very tied together by public transportation of some sort. So while the Golden City is very impressive from the sky, you can also see on the ground level how there is the mix of uses and how the people live. Next up is the citadel of Bernanzana. So right away I noticed that this entire complex sort of hugs this waterfront and it's blending the city with nature. Here we also have these terrace steps that surround the building. Surrounding the base of the building, you see some of these sort of modular structures and they're very reminiscent of some of the informal sediments that we see throughout Africa where the buildings are sort of added on as the needed. We can also see similarities to the Great Mosque of Jinnah and Jingerber, which were commissioned around the 13th century by King Musa, who is considered to be one of the wealthiest people to ever live. Some of these similarities include sort of these towering sources with these bundles of sticks called torons, which is used to help maintain a building and also provides reinforcement similar to concrete rebar. And they provide a nice decorative aspect. We have the sky bridge, which are flanked by these two towers, which reminds me of the minarets that you see on the Great Mosque, where they sort of jut out in the similarly height scale. So I'm not quite clear on what material this is built with. It's from Wakanda, and it's made out of vibranium. But further back in here, you can see that this more directly resembles the mosque and the material used in the construction. The Great Mosque was constructed using these bricks called furay, which are earthen bricks that are compacted together and then covered with a plaster. So it's clear that they're referencing the mosque here because those were the most important structures built in those societies. And similarly, the citadel is the most important structure in the Kingdom of Wakanda. Next, let's take a closer look at one of the smaller scale buildings seen in the film. Right away, I notice this building here is a clear example where it's sort of less contemporary than the surrounding buildings. It has a thatched roof and it has sort of this more golden material and pattern that's alluding to some of the cultural examples throughout Africa. This is very clearly a reference to some of the Tata castles that we see in Western Africa. 
They have very similar proportions to some of the castles that we see in Scotland from the 16th century, where there are several sort of towers that are flanking this central volume and entryway. The main structure is clearly made of regolith, similar to the mosque that we see earlier. However, those structures are a bit further north than where these are. And so as you move further south throughout Africa, you're starting to see the introduction of the thatch roof. The turrets that we see at the castle examples are also taken and separated into their own residences. And these are Tata standalone structures. Elsewhere in the film, we, we see these Tata standalone structures, which are less adorned than the example that we saw in this image. This is still located in the city and is very much in contrast to the other example that we see, which is in a more rural context and much more low tech. What I like about this shot is that it clearly shows a very recognizable building form in the African vernacular. This sort of indicates the diversity of cultures that are represented in Wakanda and also the power that exists in the main capital. You can see this idea of social cohesion and representation in the layout of the city. Right away, you can see that the city has a circular layout as opposed to a grid, and it follows you know, this river valley and these other secondary valleys that stem out from the surrounding mountain range. In the middle, you see this moat, and there are several circular buildings that are evenly spaced surrounding the citadel, and this reminds me quite a bit of the Zulu enclosures. At the scale of the community, these Zulu enclosures are really these single room residences that are surrounding a larger courtyard, and this is largely so that each member of the family gets their own private space with some expectation of participating within a larger community. Seeing this singular civic space at the center of the city definitely reminds me of the Zulu compounds and their enclosures. You can see that similarly in Kanda that there are several tribes that make up the kingdom, but they're somewhat autonomous, but they are still expected to participate in these more communal decision-making. Tell me how to best protect Wakanda. You'll need to surround yourself with people you trust. The production designer, Hannah Beachler traveled all around Africa to get an idea of how various communities were laid out. And so this is how you get this example of this circular formation with this massive importance of the civic institutions in the center. Now let's look at a building outside of the city center. Right away, what stands out to me are these intricate patterns that are carved into the structure. It also seems to just merge from the mountain and is made of the mountain, with the base being a bit wider, more pyramidal, and also being surrounded by waterfalls, and this verticality seems to be emphasized here. These intricate patterns very much remind me of the Kano House, which could be found in Nigeria. What's fun about this is that the Kano House really allowed each individual family to express their unique identity and it's sort of their own version of the coat of arms that you could find throughout other parts of the world. So the Kano houses look very different than some of the other styles that we've seen. And this is because these are usually built by upper and middle class families. Those with more means can also have the ability to individually express their, their wealth using these patterns. So the patterns that we see here in the Kano houses are also evident in the costume designs from Ruth Carter. And really similarly to the Kano houses, each of the costumes are meant to represent a specific tribe and a very unique identity. So this is one of those styles that has been built historically throughout Nigeria, but you're starting to see these appear again in the upper middle classes uh, to harken back to the roots of the area. Those are just some of the architectural details that I noticed, which makes Wakanda so unique and interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below.